Prepare to take a deep dive into the life of Adam Richman, a gluttonous gladiator who, week after week, put it all on the line in the name of Good Eats. This isn't just the untold truth of an average man. No, this is the untold truth of Adam Richman. Did you know Adam Richman is an Ivy League alum? It's hard to tell when you're watching him drool over meat and cheese, but it's true. He studied drama there. Richmond graduated from Emory College of Arts and Sciences with a degree in International Studies in 1996, before he ever pictured himself traveling around the country gorging himself full of delicious and painfully large amounts of food, he was just a lowly, recent college grad figuring out what direction he wanted his life to take. And while Richmond's life took quite the scrumptious path once he landed himself a sweet television hosting gig, it's probably not the one he planned to take. As a member of the Actors Theatre of Louisville in Kentucky, Richmond often graced the stage in theaters around Atlanta and New York City. In 2000, his acting career took a leap forward when he was accepted into the Yale School of Drama. In 2003, Richmond received his coveted Master's of Fine Arts degree from the school and soon joined three major acting unions. The acting that I was able to do as a result of being a Yale School of Drama graduate ended up taking me to the Cleveland Playhouse, yeah. took me to the San Jose Playhouse. One of those eventually offered him the opportunity to host his own food show, which Richmond eagerly auditioned for. He nailed the audition, and from that point forward, he became a staple host in the food TV landscape. Social media can have disastrous results when used inappropriately. And if you have a solid following like Adam Richman does, all it takes is one slip-up for the online community to tear down your scaffolding real quick. Well, the Twitterverse and Instagram world did just that to Richman. It all started with a photo Richman posted on Instagram showing off his weight loss. Sounds totally innocent and encouraging, right? Not when you add the hashtag Thinspiration to it. For those who don't know, the term is often used to advocate anorexia and bulimia, and it offended quite a few of his followers. Then, things got sloppy. He went on to respond to several comments with some alarming, profanity-laden messages, and went so far as to tell one poster no one would miss them if they grabbed, quote, a razor blade and drew a bath. Richmond's follow-up series to Man vs. Food, Man Finds Food, was put on hold for nearly a year after his social media mess. When someone decides to begin living a vegan lifestyle, it can surprise a lot of people around them. Didn't you know? Todd's vegan. Especially if at one point they wouldn't have hesitated to rip through a tomahawk steak with a smile on their face. Kind of like we've all seen Adam Richmond do quite a few times. So when tabloid headlines started spreading rumors that Richmond was turning away from a carnivore lifestyle and embracing all things green and leafy, fans were shocked. Richmond quickly took to social media to ensure fans the headlines were completely false, but he did admit he occasionally eats strictly vegan when training to play soccer. Hitting the soccer field with a stomach full of brisket and poutine isn't what anyone wants to do. According to Richmond, veganism is a temporary lifestyle choice he abides by when he needs to be in especially good shape, as opposed to a gung-ho, no-meat-ever-again overhaul. He didn't just tell people he still very much loved his delicious omnivore lifestyle, either. He proved it by posting a photo of him going ham on an In-N-Out burger. Here in the States, we're inundated with football, baseball, and basketball, and our soccer league, the MLS, takes a back seat to those three. However, take a trip across the pond to Europe, and you quickly realize their version of football is an all-out religion. And Adam Richman is totally on board with the fandom, especially the Tottenham Hotspurs. His passion started years ago when a friend sent him a video called 100 Greatest Goals at the Lane, and Richman was instantly hooked. Man Finds Food was actually split between the United States and England, which allowed Richmond to attend as many games as possible. He was even granted a special private tour of the stadium, where things got emotional. Richmond sent the coach a care package full of meats and spices, landing him a new texting buddy. After 59 brutal challenges throughout the course of Man vs. Food, Adam Richmond put up with a whole lot of physical discomfort. It took a stomach of steel and a willingness to put up with some pretty terrible bathroom trips to do what Richmond did. But when you look at the payoff, it all seems worth it. How much loot does an intense hosting gig like Man vs. Food get you? Well, in Richmond's case, plenty. His net worth was $10 million, which is an undeniably large chunk of change. 
after the financial breakdown of everything he's done, each episode of Man vs. Food earned him $35,000. Of course, there were also the minor roles he played in television shows like Guiding Light and All My Children, as well as his cookbook sales. Richmond definitely put his body through the ringer over the course of his Travel Channel show. But let's be honest, you'd probably deal with a few dozen rough nights on the john for millions of bucks, too. For picky eaters, there are plenty of food options that seem downright disgusting. Adam Richmond, however, has five specific foods he knows sounds funky but are actually awesome, if you have the guts to try them. First up, tongue. If you can get past the fact that it's, well, a tongue, you realize it's a delicate and lean, silky muscle. Korean restaurants often have it on the menu, where it's sliced paper-thin and served with a delicious sauce like gochujang. Caviar is next on the list. Yes, they're fish eggs, but those tiny spheres of flavor pop open in your mouth to reveal an exciting oceanic flavor. Richmond recommends you stick to the smaller eggs if you're not a fan of fishy flavors. Richmond also implores people to try sweet breads. No, they're not sweet, and no, they're not bread. In reality, it's pancreas, one of the body's awful meats. The texture is subtle, creamy, and rich. Another creamy and rich dish that's won over Richmond's heart is pâté. Describing pâté as a meat mousse may not entice people, but that's exactly what it is. Richmond says spreading it on toasted bread or pairing it with a sweet marmalade will turn pâté doubters into pâté lovers. Finally, Richmond rounds out his list with sardines. The name conjures up images of slimy fillets with an obnoxiously strong smell, but he says if you avoid the canned stuff and go to a professional fishmonger, they'll present you with flavor-packed sardines that'll keep you craving more. Adam Richmond went through plenty of suffering during his stint as Man vs. Food's host. You just had to tune in for one episode to see the grimace on his face after every hard-fought battle. But there's one that stands out as the most painful by far. It was the Fire in Your Hole Wing Challenge at a place called Munchies 420 Cafe in Sarasota, Florida. The challenge was 12 wings completely doused in a sauce containing jet black ghost chili extract, and it was one of the few food challenges Richmond never completed. However, there was a legitimately unfair reason behind the L he was forced to put up, and Richmond doesn't hesitate to tell the story. The cafe's head chef was fitted with a microphone prior to starting, and before the wings hit Richmond's table, the kitchen team was heard whispering about adding the entire bottle. Aside from the kitchen's move to overspice the wings being unfair to Richmond, what they did was completely reckless. It resulted in Richmond cowering in the back room with a swollen tongue and nasal passages, on top of crippling stomach pains. Oh, my eyes won't stop watering and my tears burn. Ugh. When Adam Richmond was initially bested by the Suicide Six Wings Challenge in Brooklyn, New York, he made it a point to eventually return and prove he was not the same man who walked out with his head held low that fateful losing day. Sitting down at a table surrounded by eager spectators, the Man vs. Food hosts loudly decrees, This one isn't for a shirt. This one isn't for a picture on a wall. This one's for pride. That it is, Mr. Richmond. The glistening wings of doom stared up from the plate with aggression. But that didn't stop our hero from jumping in headfirst, ready to conquer them with whatever strength he could muster. It was close, but Richmond withstood the fiery fury and threw the final bone down onto the plate in one act of epic glory. He probably felt some discomfort afterwards, but he soothed his pride. Many of us know what it's like to completely overindulge in one of our favorite foods, and the outcome is always horrendous. Suddenly, this amazing culinary delight we've loved for years is so hideous we can't bear to think about the flavor anymore. Roast beef and a baked potato! Mmm! During one challenge, Adam Richmond forever ruined one of his favorite foods, oysters. At the Acme Oyster House in New Orleans, Richmond dared to join the 15 Dozen Club, the pantheon of epic eaters who could suck down 15 dozen oysters. Richmond beasted his way through all 15 like a boss, but those slippery mollusks were never the same for him again. He couldn't even touch oysters for three years. If Man vs. Food aired in a prime time slot on VH1 or MTV, Adam Richmond might have impressed viewers not only for his food knowledge, but with his hip-hop insight as well. You would never know it by watching his Travel Channel programs, but the guy has a real passion for urban music. 
He unveiled his encyclopedic knowledge of it as a guest on the Sway in the Morning radio show, showing a whole new side of everyone's favorite foodie. Sway Calloway, the host of the show, invited Richmond on as a featured guest to answer questions about his Man vs. Food hosting gig, give cooking tips, and discuss music. At one point, it came time to put Richmond's knowledge of rap to the test with four difficult questions. He slam-dunked three of the four, which impressed everyone in the studio. Not only that, they were also in Crush Groove back in the day. Brrr, stick them! Ha, ha, ha! Stick them! That'd be the fat boy. Yeah. That wasn't even the first time Richmond appeared on Sway in the Morning either. On another episode, Richmond actually spits some hit fire into the mic and has everyone in the room stoked. So in Crescent Heights, I bounce the house of blues, plus I slid in free with tennis shoes, sweatshirt, jeans, and no ID. There it is! Out of Hey, if his hosting gigs ever end, he could always take up a career as Eminem's hype man. Adam Richmond's eaten more food than most people in the world will ever experience. As amazing and unique as many of those culinary experiences were, when you sample such a vast array of flavors, you're bound to come across some stuff that churns the stomach. So what was Richmond's least favorite food ever? A fermented bean dish from Japan, and it sounds pretty atrocious. Natto is its name, and when Richmond describes it on an episode of Sway in the Morning, it sounds pretty repulsive. And it looks like someone else ate it before you and was like, I don't like this. Uh -huh. And then they give it to you to eat. Richmond went on to say it smells like, quote, earth, snot, and is horrible. Funny enough, the dish is actually considered a superfood in Japan and is supposed to be quite delicious, if you can get over the bizarre consistency and apparently smell. Hey, to each their own. Some might rant and rave about the stuff, but Richmond's appetite is not on board. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more mashed videos about your favorite food celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.